Hey everybody, Chris here from O'Reilly Auto Parts to show you how to replace brake line and brake hose. Brake lines are steel or copper tubing that carry brake fluid from the master cylinder to ABS units, equalization valves, calipers, and wheel cylinders. Rubber brake hoses have the same function, but are flexible to allow for movement in the suspension system. Brake line and hose wear out over time. Steel line corrodes and rubber hose becomes less flexible over time and eventually cracks. Brake hose can also collapse and not allow fluid through, which can make the caliper stick, causing the vehicle to pull to one side during braking. Replacing brake hose is more common than replacing brake line, unless you live in a northern climate where more frequent use of road salt can cause rust. Both brake hose and line can leak eventually. You'll usually see a leak on the ground near a wheel. Today I'll be working on this 2008 Toyota Tundra, but the process will vary a little from one vehicle to the next, so be sure to know the specifics for your vehicle before getting started. If you're not completely comfortable doing this yourself, we'd be happy to recommend a professional technician in your area. Once you've got your supplies together, here's what you'll do. Park on a level surface, jack up your vehicle and put it on stands. Brake hoses run from the wheel to the frame of the vehicle, and metal brake lines run from the frame to the master cylinder. If brake fluid is leaking near a wheel, you'll need to remove the wheel where you'll be replacing hoses or line. Whether you're replacing hose or line or both, when you detach an inline fitting, you'll want to use a plug or cap to keep excessive brake fluid from leaking. There's no specific way to plug the line. In many cases, a piece of tape or a short piece of hose with the bolt in the end works well. Leaving the lid on the master cylinder keeps dirt and moisture out of the brake fluid and slows the draining while you plug the line. Also, line wrenches are important for this type of job or any job where inline fittings need to be loosened. The open end of the wrench has six sides rather than four. They work pretty well with frozen fittings and it sometimes helps to try tightening slightly before loosening. But if you run into excessive rust, you can use penetrating oil to help loosen things up. So let's start by replacing the brake hose. Have a drain pan in place under the wheel well. Use your line wrench to loosen the nut holding the hose to the junction box, or in the case of our Toyota, the nut holding the hose in the line above it. Use pliers to remove the retaining clip. Plug the line or the hole in the junction box to keep it from leaking brake fluid. In some cases, brake fluid can drain from the hose into your drain pan at this point. In other cases, the hose will need to be completely removed before it will drain. Then remove the other end from the brake caliper, or in our case, we'll remove the end from the brake line below the hose. Use pliers to remove the retaining clip. Once the old hose is removed, attach the new hose to the lower end first. Clip it into place. Now remove the plug, attach the hose there. and clip it into place. Be sure to tighten the fittings to manufacturer specifications to avoid leaks. Repeat these steps for each brake hose that need to be replaced. After you're done replacing all brake hose that needs replaced, if you're not replacing brake line, you'll need to top off the master cylinder and bleed your brake system to remove air from the lines. Now to replace brake line. Depending on your vehicle, you may be able to replace an entire line as one piece, or you may need to replace a shorter section. Brake line is available in pieces from a few inches to several feet. Replacement brake line comes in steel or in some locations copper, which is softer. The steel line normally requires a bending tool so the metal line does not crimp. Copper lines can be bent by hand without any special tools. O'Reilly Auto Parts also offers some pre-bent brake lines designed to be installed in place of the original line, and no cutting or flaring is required. We'll start by addressing this scenario and work our way toward cutting and flaring. With the vehicle on stands, open the hood and locate the master cylinder. Put a drain pan in place under the wheel well you'll be working in. And use your line wrench to loosen the nut on the brake line at the master cylinder. In our case, we're removing the end from the hose above it.
Remove the end and plug the line and keep it from leaking fluid. Brake fluid is highly corrosive, so make sure that you don't get any on your skin or paint. If you do, rinse it off immediately. Now loosen the other end of the line from the junction box or caliper. The fluid in the line will start to drain. After it's had time to drain, unclip the line from the body and carefully remove it from the vehicle without bending it. Use a rag or shop towel at the lower end of the brake line to soak up any brake fluid as you remove it. If you're going to be bending new line to match the old, you'll need the bends in the old line to remain intact so you can use it as a guide to shape your new line. In a moment I'll show you how to bend the line and how to cut it and flare it if needed. If your vehicle is a model that has pre-bent lines available, the pre-bent replacement will be the proper length and comes pre-flared with fittings. Carefully work the new line back up to the point to where it was attached, clip it back into the frame and reattach it at the lower end first. Then remove your plug and reattach it there. Again, be sure these fittings are tightened to manufacturer specifications. You'll repeat these steps for each brake line that can be replaced in this manner. If your brake job is complete at this point, you'll want to top off your master cylinder and bleed your brake system. If you'll be doing any cutting, bending, or flaring, here are the steps you'll take. In some cases, you'll be cutting a section of the old brake line out. You'll need to get a piece of brake line that is long enough to replace the piece you're removing. And when you remove the piece of the line from under the vehicle, you'll want to have a plug ready to keep the opening closest to the master cylinder from leaking fluid. If you're starting the process of brake line replacement by cutting the brake line, you'll do it with a tubing cutter. Here's how it works. Be sure to get a precise measurement if this is a replacement piece, so that your cut is in exactly the right place. If you're going to be flaring the line, the flare will use the last quarter inch of line. If you're going to use a brass union to link the two pieces, subtract the length of the fitting from the length of the line you're cutting. Whatever you do, don't cut your line too short. Once the tubing cutter is in place on the line, take your time and turn the knob on the tubing cutter one quarter to half a turn at a time, or until it's tight. Turn the tubing cutter 360 degrees clockwise, then counterclockwise each time you tighten the knob. It can take you as many as 10 times tightening the blade before the cut is complete. When you get close to completing the cut, go slower to make the cut as clean as possible. The tube needs to be smooth inside and out before attempting to flare it. If there's a piece that isn't smooth, it's worth it to redo the cut. Anytime you cut brake line, you'll need to use a metal file to take the burrs off the inner opening of the tubing and the cut end and file to a light chamfer or angle up around the opening so it can be properly flared. If you're cutting line under the vehicle, you may be cutting a piece out of the middle of the line, removing the upper portion of the line coming from the master cylinder, or removing the lower portion of the line connecting to the junction box. Regardless of which of these you're doing, cut or detach the end closest to the master cylinder first and plug the opening so it doesn't leak. Place a drain pan under the lower end of the piece that you're removing before cutting or detaching it, so you'll have something to catch the fluid from the line. Use a rag at the bottom of the line that you're removing to catch any excess brake fluid once it's drained. Now that you have the old section of brake line removed, you can get a measurement for that piece of line that will replace it. Use a piece of string that's at least as long as the section of brake line you've removed, and starting at one end of the line, carefully work your way along each bend for the length of it to determine how long you need your replacement line to be. You can measure the string with a tape measure to determine length, or if you already have a section of line, you can lay it against the line and mark the spot where it needs to be cut. Depending on the measurement, it may be possible to purchase a piece of replacement line that's the exact length you need. If not, get a piece of line that's longer than what you need, and use your tubing cutter to get it exactly right. Again, if you're going to be flaring the line, the flare will use the last quarter inch of line, and subtract the length of a double flare union if you'll be using one to join two pieces. Once it's cut, use your metal file to deburr the opening and the end and chamfer around the opening. Whenever possible, avoid flaring brake line yourself. But when it's necessary, here's how you'll do it. Before flaring or bending, put the fittings that you need on the line. Only use fittings designed specifically for brake line. Never use compression fittings. If you're gonna be flaring, you'll want to make sure that you're double flaring by using a double flaring tool. To start this process, make sure the end is cut and square, and that it's deburred and chamfered. If the new end and flare aren't made properly, 
the brake line will not seal and you could have a leak. If you've never flared line before, practice on a piece of spare line to make sure that you know how to get the process right. Place the line in the correct hole in the flaring tool, leaving a small length of the tubing exposed. The length of exposed tubing should be equal to the height of the adapter. This length is very important to get a good flare. Fit the adapter stem into the tubing. The adapter is specific to the brake line, so it should be snug when it's fit into the tubing. Tighten the flaring bar firmly, starting with the nut closest to the tubing. Just make sure it won't slip. Place the anvil over the adapter and turn it down until the adapter contacts the flaring bar. Then remove the adapter. The end of the tubing should be bell shaped. Now place the anvil over the bar and turn the anvil down until the tubing rolls in on itself. Remove the tool and the tubing should be double flared. Compare your line with the brake line that came pre-flared. They should look identical. The flare opening should be smooth all the way around and rolled evenly. If the flare doesn't look right, do not install the line. Now that you have a piece of line that is proper length with fittings and double flared ends, you're ready to bend it to match the original line. Make sure the fittings stay at the proper ends as you start the bend, so that they don't get stuck in the middle of the line behind a bend. We'll work on the steel line first. Slide your bending tool into place, start at one end, and match each bend of the line you're replacing. Take your time and work precisely. You want this piece of line to be shaped in exactly the same way as the one that you removed. By situating it in the same way it was when you took the old one out, you'll assure that it's not too close to exhaust or any moving parts. Copper line is not available at all O'Reilly Auto Parts stores, but it can be ordered from O'ReillyAuto.com and shipped to you. Because it's so much softer than steel, it can be bent by hand. The process is the same, but you won't need the bending tool to get it into shape. Like you would for the steel line, take your time and get the bends precisely the way that they are on the line that you're replacing. One big difference here is that once you bend the steel line, it's bent, and bending it back is likely to ruin it. But the copper line allows you to correct mistakes that are made during bending. 
and remains just as strong. Once your line is bent to match the one that you've removed, you're ready to install it. Install the end furthest from the master cylinder first. Then remove your plug and install the upper end. If you're attaching it to the line under the vehicle that you've cut and double flared, that's when you'll use a double flare union to connect the nuts of the two lines. Again, make sure the fittings are tightened to manufacturer specifications to avoid leaks. Lastly, you want to fill the master cylinder with new brake fluid and bleed your brake system. Check out our video on how to properly bleed brakes, replace your wheels, and lower your vehicle. And that's it! You'll find everything you need for this and other jobs at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store or O'ReillyAuto.com. Our DIY videos are designed to help answer questions we get in our stores every day. If you found this one helpful, subscribe to our channel to get all the latest. We'll see you again soon!